All right. Good. Waiver wide running backs. Now, just a reminder, you ran through it before, but the teams on by Atlanta, Chicago, Green Bay, Indianapolis, New Orleans, and Washington. So six teams. That is a lot. And let's start off with my favorite running back in the league. As firstly, we look at the guys who are on by. You ran through those names before. Uh, but the guy who I think will be the number one waiver pickup this week, the great Bam Knight, Lord of the Bam Wagon, uh, he should be rostered everywhere. There's no question. Look, by the way, this is the same thing we said last week. Yes. We talked about this a week ago on this show. Um, we had Connor Rogers, our friend Connor, who covers the Jets, does a great job. He was on the show last Monday. He was also on the show yesterday. But um, uh, And, you know, he basically said, like, look, they really like Bam Knight. They think they found something in a true three-down back that can use him in passing game that even if Michael Carter had been healthy in this game, they would have used Bam Knight and that they view Michael Carter much more as a complimentary back, a third down back, and that they've been looking since Brees Hall went down. I'm entirely paraphrasing Connor Rogers here. Since, since uh, Brees Hall went down, they've been looking for someone to sort of step up. And that's exactly what Bam Knight has done. We are all on the Bam wagon. We are. Bam, bam. Yes, Let's go. He's Bam, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. As we look at the past two Make games. The t-shirt. He's gotten 14 and 15 carries, very efficient running the ball as well. And then he's also getting the passing down usage, which I think this week as an eight and a half point underdog at Buffalo is going to be key because you would expect that they will be throwing a fair bit. And just a reminder as well, his name is Zonovan. So if you're looking for him on the waiver wire, right. do not look for B.Knight. It is Z, Z. Knight. Z, Z. Knight. Zonovan, Bam Z Knight in is Australia. his name. Um, 75% of the running back carries for the Jets in week 13. He's had at least 17 touches and at least 100 yards from scrimmage now in back-to-back weeks. To your point, Bill's nine and a half point favorites in this game. So, right, I'm agreeing with you. The passing game usage gives me confidence against the Buffalo Bills. To me, he's the number one, if he's still available, and he shouldn't be, but if he is still available, he's the number one uh, waiver claim. The number two guy right next to him is the guy he's facing in, in that game against Buffalo. And that's James Cook, related to Dalvin, of course. Uh, you know, early round draft pick for the Buffalo Bills this year. They like him. 11 targets over the last two games. And we talked about this after last week's Bills game, um, where the Thursday night game against the Patriots were like, felt like this was a James Cook coming out party. Yeah, and I think that, you know, he has the talent upside and the fact that he played the same number of snaps as Devin Singletary, that is extremely encouraging. And look, this Bills offense has kind of been a little bit inconsistent the rest of the way, so I think the concern was that this was just a a machine and they were just going to keep things exactly as they were, but they have struggled a little bit, so I think that it makes sense they would give James Cook more of a run. There's no question about it. He's averaging over five yards per carry and 10 yards per reception this year. You have seen the explosiveness in small doses. We finally saw it last week where he played 43% of the snaps as you see it there on your screen with 20 touches in this game last week. And now he gets a uh, a Jets defense that's 17th against the run over the last month that just gave up a big game to Dalvin Cook, you know, related to James Cook. It could be back-to-back weeks for uh, the Cook boys. So um, James Cook, to me, who's available in 76% of Yahoo leagues, I, I think he's he's going to have a role not just this week, but for the rest of the season. Yep, and I think we've spoken about it before, but the thing with the Jets' defense, which overall is excellent, the reason they're excellent is Sauce Gardner on the left, DJ Reed on the right, manning up Gabe Davis and Stephon Diggs. The Jets' defense was excellent against the Bills a month ago, but the way to beat the Jets is with the running back and with the tight end. So I think that James Cook, there's a lot of scope for him this week. Let's talk about Jordan Mason, uh, who plays against Tampa Bay. Saw an uptick in usage. I... A a thousand percent. Now, listen, it's a tough matchup with Tampa Bay, but then you think about the upcoming schedule at Seattle. You love that home to the commanders. You don't love that. But then at Las Vegas. And I think that with Brock Purdy under center, they're going to want to go even more run heavy. So this is a guy who, uh, you know, uh, ran well last week, you know, when they went down and and sort of like passed the eye test to me. And so we were like wondering, like, how are they going to replace Elijah Mitchell? Is it going to be more Debo Samuel? Is it going to be a committee? Is it going to be some Jordan Mason, some Tyrion Davis, Davis Price, some Tevin Coleman? Nope, it's going to be all Jordan Mason. And in a game in which, in a game in which uh, Chris McCaffrey had 25 touches, Jordan Mason still had, uh, I want to say, you know, 13 for what did he have? He had like uh, he had like 71 yards or something like that off the top of my head. Let yeah. me look this up real quickly. But like he was, you know, he he looked. Here's what I'll tell you, is that he looked good. 
Uh, specifically, all right. So uh, Jordan Mason had, sorry, eight for 51. He averaged 6.4 yards per carry against the Dolphins as well. And so my expectation here is that his role will increase because they like him there. He runs hard, and that's how the Niners want to win. They want to, uh, they want to limit Brock Purdy, right? Yep. They want to play good defense. We're going to run the ball, and we're going we're gonna to grind out 17 17- 14 wins all day long. Yeah, and also this isn't the Tampa Bay run defense of last year, the year before. There's no Indomitian Sur. It's not quite the same unit. It's still good. Still a good yeah. run defense, but it's not the type of unit where Frank Reich completely gives up running Jonathan Taylor last year against the Bucs because he just can't get anything. But I just I just think he's an important add. You know, we talked about him last week. We talked about him in Fantasy Football pregame as kind of a sneaky add prior to the game starting. But uh, considering he's still available in 85% of Yahoo leagues, a lot of people not listening to us <laughs> serves you right, uh, but what I would say here is is that like there's there's some, I think there's going to be an increased role for him as well. You like some of the you know upcoming matchups as well, and also just insurance for Christian McCaffrey. Well, that's like it's thing. clear that like with Elijah Mitchell on IR, if anything were to happen to CMC, Jordan Mason suddenly inherits an amazing role. We're going to talk a little bit later in the show about insurance running backs. We talk about it every single week, but as we head into the fantasy playoffs and this is win or get in time. If you know you're locked in or you feel pretty good about your chances playing in the fantasy postseason, you want to make sure all of your stars are locked up. Yep, and I think with Christian McCaffrey, he's about to see insane usage yeah. next to Brock Purdy. It's going to be at the expense of Brandon Ayuk, other Niners pass catches, and uh, Christian McCaffrey's not afraid of getting hurt. Uh, he does have a little bit of that history, so I think that Jordan Mason should be rostered everywhere. Let's talk about a frequent guest in this part of the show. Not the most inspiring pickup, but uh, he has been providing a little bit of value, and that's Jarek McKinnon. Double digit fantasy points in three of the past five. He's playing at least 25 snaps in every game this year, except two CEH on the uh, on the IR. And so it's really the Isaiah Pacheco and Jarek McKinnon show. As you see his last five game log right there, they play Denver this week. Um, and then they're at Houston, which you love. They're home to Seattle, which you love. Home to Denver this week as well. I don't know that the uh, the Broncos really, you know, scare you. It's a good defense, but it's not a great defense. They're 16th against the run over the last month yep. as well. And so they'll get into negative game script. And what was encouraging about McKinnon's usage last week is that we always think of him, well, he's the passing down guy. Pacheco's the thumper between the tackles, and McKinnon is the passing down guy. And they used him somewhat that way, but they also ran him between the tackles somewhat last week. And he ended up, he scores the touchdown on a passing play. But the fact of the matter is, is that McKinnon getting rushing attempts is also positive. And so, again, there's a reason he's fourth on this list. But uh, do I think he has value in slightly deeper leagues? I do. Yeah, and if you've got... Jonathan Taylor and Alvin Kamara on your team and you're on by and you've got a really good team otherwise and you just need eight, nine points. Exactly. You could do worse than you could, McKinnon. You could do worse and you probably have. You, you, yeah. You could also do better. But uh, I, th- I think at the other end of the spectrum, Jerry McKinnon, you very much know what you're getting out of him. I'm not sure you ever know what you're getting out of Cam Akers, but he's shown more signs of life. He scores two touchdowns against the Seahawks as his best game in as long as I can remember. So we, we in, on the pre-show meeting, so we talk about this, right? We believe it or not, we actually we actually produce this thing, and uh, and I <clears throat> uh, excuse me, uh, you know we talk about these things in the pre-show meeting, and we're like we're ranking where we would we would take all these running backs, right? You can make an argument for Cam Akers, number one, should be the number one pickup this week oh because. Boy. This is a guy who has been a fantasy superstar in his past. He's coming off a two-touchdown game. There's opportunity with the Rams. You can also make an argument, which is the argument I made, which is why he's here at the very end of the list, <laughs> that this is buyer beware. Yes, he played 72% of the snaps in Week 13. He's also been under 40% in six straight games leading up to this. He got the two touchdowns against Seattle, one of the worst run defenses in the NFL, a team that was top three in terms of most fantasy points allowed to opposing running backs before giving up two touchdowns to Cam Akers. Um, that offense has been all over the map. You don't have any confidence in their offensive line. Every single week, it's a different guy leading that backfield. Cam Akers has gone from he's our starter to he's in the doghouse to he's a healthy scratch to he's requested a trade and we're going to honor it to he's still on the team to, okay, maybe he's going to work his way back to playing under 40% and losing time to Kieran Williams and Ronnie Rivers. And now to, oh, here he goes, 72% of the snaps and uh, he's getting two touchdowns. If there's a positive to hang your hat on, In addition to last week, he's had at least 14 touches and 60 yards in two of the past three. So maybe he's finally starting to get healthier. 
coming off that Achilles. Maybe he's finally starting to be the the uh, the Cam Akers we saw pre-injury last year. Um, they play the Raiders this week, which is a good matchup in theory. Yes. If he can get the ball. This is what is known as fence sitting. Yeah, yeah I was going to say. That is make what a, I am doing. I want to be opinion? very clear about this. I am, I am freakingly on the fence about Cam Akers. I have no insight here. On the fence. I have no insight here. I have no good feel for this. My, <laughs> my instinct tells me that I want no part of the Rams offense and that if Cam Akers goes to somebody else in my league and he scores two touchdowns again, God bless, knock yourself out. I feel better about the four guys I mentioned ahead of it. But if you believe in Cam Akers, if you believe in Cam Akers, then there you go. Listen, yeah. it's, it's, you know. Look, I don't, I don't believe I tell, in. I tell my kids. I t- I, you know, this, and this, is, this is true. I'll tell you ever at home. Like, when you believe, that's when stuff happens. If you don't believe, things don't happen. Yeah, I don't think going to war with Cam Akers and staking one's name to Cam Akers has gone that well over the past two years. But at the same well, time, it's, it's right. his schedule upcoming, and this is the reason if you right. were to believe. If you, he, doubt, if you doubt Santa, he doesn't show up. When you believe in Santa, Santa shows up. Yeah, that's the so first that's Santa the same, Cam, Cam Akers, Akers the same way. If you believe in if you believe in Cam Akers, maybe you know maybe he shows up. Yeah. I don't believe in Cam Akers. Yeah, I know you don't. But his schedule upcoming: Raiders Thursday night, as you said, at Green Bay. You love that. Denver, as you said, the middle of the pack, and then at the Chargers. And also, you John Wofford, that. he showed a level of competence in the Rams' offense. Like, they got the 23 against Seattle. Yeah. Seattle have a bad defense, but they're playing bad defenses upcoming outside of Denver. So, I don't know. Cam Akers, whatever. Here's what I would say. I don't want... You want to take a flyer on him? Take a flyer on him. Yeah. Take a flyer on him. Yeah. Um, it just, you know... I don't know. You know, it's just... Yeah, see. Yeah. See if this... Yeah. See if they go back to Kieran Williams or they continue with... Uh, Cam Akers. One last thing we should mention here is Seattle. Sure. Pete Carroll, of course, saying Kenneth Walker has an ankle strain, not a sprain. It's like the ankle went kind of, the foot went like down instead of to the side. It's a very weird injury. It's a very sure weird injury. Like They're hopeful he plays this week. So I do think that, um, you know, Travis Homer was out last week with that knee sprain illness. So my expectation here is, is if Kenneth Walker misses, probably be a bit of a committee, but DJ Dallas would be the head of that committee. He, last week, he left in the first half. He returned. He has also somewhat of a high ankle sprain. We, you're just sort of throwing dark. Who knows? What's who, going on with all these ankles? Why are they so different to normal ankles? I don't, somewhat I don't, of a high ankle I don't, sprain. I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully, we get more clarity on the Seattle running back situation as we move forward uh, throughout the week there. They're home to Carolina this week. You know, Carolina bottom 12 run defense over the last four weeks. So, it's, you know, it's, it's a, a, in a week in which six or more running backs are out, you know, you potentially could do worse. So it's a, it's just a storyline to monitor as well. Watch them like sign Alex Collins off the, you know, yeah. off free agency and, and then he get off. 20 t- touches, but yeah. uh, right. There All you right. go. Let's jump into insurance running backs to add down the stretch headlined by the Merriam Webster dictionary definition of an insurance running back, Alexander Mattison. Yeah, of course. Deion Jackson now Colts on a bye this week, but just worth it. Ingram, the Cardinals coming off of a bye. I think he's an interesting one, obviously, backing up James Conner. Uh, you know, you see Matt Breida there for Saquon Barkley, Chuba Hubbard for Deontay Foreman as well. Well, you know it's like a one-for-one. One. You've got Boston Scott uh, backing up Miles Sanders there on that screen. My expectation is it would be a combo of him and Gainwell if something were to happen to Sanders. But uh, we just, again, I would much rather have back up my production at a running back spot so that if something happens to one of my guys, I know, okay, I don't need to go battle everyone on the waiver wire or if I'm out of fab money, whatever. I've got that person on my team versus holding on to this, you know, rookie rookie that I'm hoping will pop. You yeah. know, like Isaiah and, Spiller. Yeah. Sky Moore. Ain't yeah. going to happen for yeah. Sky Moore. No, guys, it's not. It's not. Sorry. It just, you know Sorry, what I mean? Sky, like, if you're watching. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and RotorWorld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know, autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.